Okay, we are turning to, again, the Gospel of John. So if you do have your Bible, go ahead and open it up. We are going to be looking at the first 15 plus 16, John 3, 16, today. And I was thinking about uh, probably, I don't know, thousands of messages for sure um, in the course of the last 30 years that this message and this text is probably the most important text of all of the Bible. Because in it, we hear about the kingdom of God. In it, Jesus proclaims what it is to be born again or born new. And so if you are concerned about seeing or entering the kingdom of God, if you are concerned about being right with God and have a desire to enter his kingdom, this day is for you. I know many of you, if not most of you in this place, are already believers. And at the end of this message, I want you to understand what God has done through Christ to you, that the foundation of your faith would be strengthened and secure, and that you would praise God and glorify Christ. If you're a believer, that's what I want to happen in our hearts. Now, if you're here today and, you know, you've been hanging out for, at church for a long time, or you're here for, you know, the first time, that God would speak to your heart as well, and that he would be working among us as the Spirit works among us, and we're asking God to do that. And so, will you attune your ears to what Christ would say to us this morning? And then next week, we could continue on in this chapter, continue on in this chapter, but this is critical. So if you've been with us, you understand that John's aim of writing this gospel is found in chapter 20. He says that these things were written to convince us to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. That title, Life in His Name, is from this passage. And we have seen, and you will continue to see if you're here with us, John pointing to example after example of um, what Christ has done, testimony after testimony of people declaring who he is, teaching after teaching of Jesus himself, and through the Holy Spirit, others' proclamation of who he is. John does this over and over again, and in this passage, we'll say and we'll see this thing as well. So the whole sermon can be captured in one sentence. It's this, it should be on the screen here. To enter the kingdom of God, you must be born again by water and the Spirit through believing in Jesus Christ. To enter the kingdom of God, you must be born again by water and the Spirit through believing in Jesus Christ. That is the entire sermon, and we're going to break it down in three parts as we look to what Christ is saying. So this time in his ministry, Jesus has been gathering disciples, calling people to himself. He is starting to baptize or have his disciples baptizing, and we'll see John, the, we saw John the Baptist, we'll see him again as he is diminishing and Christ's ministry is ascending. And so at this moment, those who heard him, those who were curious about him, were trying to figure out who this is. In particular, the religious authorities, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, there were 70 men who kind of oversaw the ministry and the work of God there in Israel, the people of God. And they were particularly um, alert to and sensitized to any new rabbi or any new teaching. And so they wanted to know who this was. In this passage, we see Jesus interacting with a man named Nicodemus, a teacher of the Jews. And this was no unlearned man. We could call him the Dr. Reverend Professor Nicodemus. And we'll see Nicodemus approaching Jesus at night, meaning that he didn't necessarily want to be noticed by those who'd be looking for him. 
It also means that he didn't have the social pressure to, you know, stand his ground that may have made him more open to knowing more about this Jesus. And so this is a precious passage. So get in your mind Jesus and his disciples and Jesus having this meeting at night with the reverend doctor, professor Nicodemus. So this is how it starts, John chapter 3, starting with verse 1. I'm reading in the ESV version this morning. And there was a man of the Pharisees whose name was Nicodemus. He was a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night, and he said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Now Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now Nicodemus said to him, Wait a second. So how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? This is our first point. To enter the kingdom of God, you must be born again. Now again, Nicodemus was well-educated. He was well-respected. He knew the scriptures inside and out. And he was again curious to find out who this Jesus really was. And his introductory comments were telling in the sense of he recognized Jesus to be a rabbi, which meant a religious teacher. He also recognized that God was with Jesus because of some of the things that he knew Jesus was doing. Now, he didn't recognize that Jesus was the Son of God, but he did respect the fact and acknowledge the case that God was with this one. So he entered into conversation and stated some of these things. Now, you see Jesus' response to this intro And it seemed pretty kind of strange. He kind of went went right for the juggler right away. You notice this? It wasn't like this small talk bantering and, hey, how was rabbi school? Hey, I never went, you know, and all this type of stuff, right? There wasn't this exchange. But after this greeting, Jesus told him, I love this, truly, truly, This is set in stone. You hear this twice. Hey, this is the truth. Listen to me, Nicodemus. I say to you, unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, Jesus saying this tells us some things about Nicodemus. Number one, that Jesus, Nicodemus, wanted to see the kingdom of God. Which tells me and tells us that Nicodemus wasn't trying to ascend the political or religious ladder to rule over the people and and assert his authority. That Nicodemus in his heart truly wanted to enter God's kingdom. Truly wanted life eternal. And I'm sure in Nicodemus' mind... That he thought the way to do this was to, of course, obey the law. And he studied and he thought and he tried to live according to God's law so that he would be worthy to enter the kingdom. And then with this conversation with Jesus, Jesus went to this learned man and say, bro, I'm telling you. You're not going to see the kingdom unless you're born again. Now, you would have responded as Nicodemus if you were there at this time because this phrase, born again, was new to him. If you search the Old Testament scripture, it's not there as in those words are not 
there. If you look, the concept is all over the place. But these words are the first time that Nicodemus probably heard them. And so as if you were sitting there and you're looking intently across the table at Jesus, you heard these words, you would have thought as he. Born again? Like, how is that possible? I'm a full-grown dude, and that ain't going to happen. What do you mean by this? Right? There was this mystery to this, and he was like taken aback. He wanted to enter the kingdom. He knew the scripture, and here was this new rabbi teaching this thing called born again. So he asked, what is this about? How can this happen? And Jesus then continued to teach our friend Nicodemus as he is teaching us in verse 5. This is how Jesus answered. He said, again, truly, truly, what I'm saying to you is true. I say to you that unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he or she cannot enter the kingdom of God. For that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. But do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. Now the wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. This is where we see our second point. Now to enter the kingdom of God, I'm just going to be stacking these together. You must be born again. And Jesus now says this is what this means by water and spirit. So, all right, what in the world is he talking about here? Right? Again, he says, truly, truly, saying, this is true. What I'm telling you is right. That it is set in stone that this is the only way. So to enter the kingdom of God, one must be born again. Which means being born of the water and the spirit. So we have to ask, well, what in the world does that mean? Now, this phrase, born of water and spirit, probably struck a, a chord with Nicodemus. Because again, he knew the Old Testament. Jesus was helping to explain to him from the Old Testament what this means, saying you must be born of water and the Spirit. This phrase comes from the book of Ezekiel, and Ezekiel is an Old Testament prophet. Now, in the passage that Jesus is referencing, and we're going to read it in just a moment, God had been telling his people some 500 years before Jesus what he God was going to do with them so that his God's name would be proclaimed among the nations God called his people to himself called them to follow him and they were terrible at it constantly complaining constantly building idols constantly running away from God, constantly living out of their own sinful nature. And God, in his patience and in his kindness and in his goodness, continued to call them to himself and says, okay, y'all, you've been trying to do this in your own power. You have been failing miserable because you are unable to do this. So this is what I'm going to do. And this is Ezekiel chapter 36. It's an important passage. Jesus is referencing it here. And this is that passage starting in verse 25. This is God saying, he said, I will sprinkle 
clean water on you. There's the water. And you shall be clean from all your uncleanliness. And from all your idols, I will cleanse you. And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. There is the spirit. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. So do you now see what Jesus was talking about? To be born again means to have God forgive you of your sins. To cleanse you from following something other than God. Being born of water means that you are cleansed and forgiven of your sins. We see this water of cleansing all throughout the Old Testament, and we know if we are honest with ourselves that all of us have fallen short of God's perfection. We recognize in our own heart that we don't have the ability to do the good we want to do, and we fail and need to be cleansed. So Jesus is saying that to be born again, it's two parts. And we have some uh, illustrations over here. And thank you, Trudy, for doing these every week. There is the wind I'm going to talk about in a second. There's water. There's a change of heart. Jesus was telling Nicodemus, bro, you need to be born again. He says, what does that mean? Jesus says, well, you need to be born of water, of spirit. What does that mean? Being born of water means that you turn to Christ or to God asking for forgiveness of your sins. That's the starting point. Humility and recognize that we've fallen short of God's standard. And again, if you are honest with yourself, you know that to be the case. He says, you have to be cleansed, and I will do the cleansing, because I am the great cleansing one. And then coupled with being forgiven of our sins, it does give us a clean slate. However, we continue to sin, and so we need God's Spirit to take our heart that is set against God, that is stony and hard. And God says, I'm going to give you a new heart. I'm going to do surgery, spiritual surgery on your soul and take out the stony, hard heart and give you a new heart. Heart that is sensitive to me and can love me. Heart that will love and other people, and I will cause you to walk in my statutes, and I will cause you to be careful to obey my rules. Do you see all that God does in us becoming born again and new? God is the one that cleanses us from sin. God is the one that gives us a new heart. God is the one that gives us ability to follow him. That's what God does. And Jesus is telling this religious leader, I know you want to enter the kingdom. But you can't do it on your own merit. Flesh gives birth. Flesh, you can try, but all you're going to end up is doing the same Come to me being born of water. I will cleanse you of your sin. And I will give you my spirit and make you new. So when Jesus was telling this to Dr. Nicodemus, explaining, you can't do it on your own. You have to come to God. And he must cleanse you, give you his spirit, give you 
his breath like God did to Adam and breathing life in with his breath, making what is dead and lifeless come to life. Jesus was explaining this. This water, Nicodemus, you need to be forgiven. This spirit, this wind, Nicodemus, which blows as it will. You don't understand where it comes from. You don't understand where it's going. But it moves and changes hearts, even in this place today. This Nicodemus, this friend, is what that means. Now as Nicodemus was sitting there and interacting with this one called Jesus, knowing God is with him, he was trying to comprehend this and being born again and water of spirit and then he asks another question, well, how can I be born this way, right? Verse 9, John chapter 3, continue to read. Now Nicodemus said to Jesus, well, how can these things be? How can this happen? I want this to happen. Jesus answered him, Nicodemus, aren't you the teacher of Israel? And yet, you don't understand this? Truly, truly, I say to you, we, Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, we know who are gathered to us, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen. You, Nicodemus, have not received our testimony. Now, if I have told you earthly things and you don't believe, how can you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Well, no one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. Jesus, of course, we know was talking of himself. Verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whoever believes in him may have eternal life. There is our thesis statement once again. So here we find our third point of this passage today. Again, I'm putting these things together. So to enter the kingdom of God, you must be, must be born again. How? By water and the Spirit. How does that happen? Through Believing in Jesus Christ. So let's break this down a little bit. So again, here's Nicodemus. He's sitting across from Jesus. Jesus is giving him one thing after another and drilling down. And Nicodemus, as a good doctor, is asking more questions and trying to figure things out. And now we're getting down, down, down to the heart of this. Jesus was, in one sense, flabbergasted that this man, Dr. Reverend Professor Nicodemus, the teacher of Israel, couldn't and didn't know these things, <laughs> flabbergasted, saying, bro, why haven't you been paying attention? Why haven't you received our testimony? And then Jesus gave Nicodemus, an Old Testament reference. 
something that Nicodemus knew about mentally but did not connect with him eternally. Does Nicodemus, I'm going to tell you how. And then he referenced this passage. And some of you who know the Old Testament, you'll be like, oh, I remember that. Some of you who don't know the Old Testament, you'll be like, what the heck is that, right? What? Snakes in the desert? What's that? Okay. Well, let's take a look, right? Go to the Old Testament. This is Numbers. The whole incident is found here. At the time of the writing, Moses was leading the people of Israel. The people, guess what? We're complaining, right? Complaining about the manna, complaining that was taking too long, questioning if God could do what he said he would do to bring them to the promised land, complaining about Moses, complaining about everything. I know none of you do that. <clears throat> And so they were there in the desert. God had done miraculous things over and over and over and over and over again. These people didn't get it. And so here's the passage. Numbers 21, starting with verse 4. Aaron, another leader, had just died. They're in the desert at this Mount Hor. And this is what happened. They set out from the way to the Red Sea. They were continuing to move. To go around the land of Edom. That was a tribe that was there that wouldn't let them through. They had to go around. And the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in this wilderness? Right? This is mind-blowing. The people who saw the ten plagues, they saw the, 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 the Red Sea part, who got manna, who had been fed, and had been all of this stuff, and they're like, oh, I don't trust you, God, and who is this person, and this is horrible, and we hate this place, and it's taking too long, and there's no food and no water, and we don't like it a bit, Right? Sounds like you're a nice flesh or old nature, right? Verse 6. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned. Yes, they had. For we have spoken against the Lord, and we have spoken against you. Pray to the Lord that he takes away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. That's a strange story, right? <laughs> Again, we see the context, right? And this is the one that Jesus referenced. He says, all of us have rebelled against God. Regardless of his goodness shown to us time and time and time and time again. And so God, out of his goodness causes these snakes. He said to the people, oh, you don't want to follow me? How do you like some snakes, right? The God who created all things, that can command all things, says, all right, boys, 
have at them, right? And up they came. So they became so miserable in their sin. They cried out for mercy. We've sinned. Sometimes God sends the snake. Let's us have life without his goodness. If you don't want to follow me, go right ahead. He does that because of his goodness to return our hearts towards him. And the people were dying in their sin, so they called out, Moses, we're sorry, pray for us. They didn't even feel like they were able to pray, pray for us. And Moses prayed for them. And God told them, okay, I'm going to give them relief. Moses, make a serpent, put it up on a pole. And then when those who have been bit look towards it because of their need, because of their, um, uh, uh, their, <laughs> because of their faith, right? They will look up towards it. They will be healed. And Jesus said, that snake is me. The news is that all of us are snake bitten. We're all dying. And Jesus said, Nicodemus, that wasn't just about a snake, that's about me. I am the one that is going to be lifted up. And that everyone who looks to me will be made whole. This is the gospel. All of us have to recognize that we are snake bitten. We're rebels against God, and our sin will take us down. We know this. Jesus took the venom of that bite on him so that when we look to him, we will be made whole. This is what Jesus was telling Nicodemus. And this is what he tells us. Will you look to me out of your need of new life and your need for forgiveness? If you look to me, you will be made new. And I will wash you clean by my water. And I will give you a new heart through my spirit. And you indeed will be born again able to enter and see the kingdom of God. I'm not only going to forgive your sins, but I'm going to give you a new heart to follow me. To go after me. This is what Jesus was and is proclaiming. And what it means to enter the kingdom of God to be born again by water and spirit through looking to Christ who took our sin upon him so that we may become the righteousness of God. This is what Jesus was saying. This is the gospel. This is how you enter. You cannot enter the kingdom of God on your own merit. You're good, but you're not good enough. Actually, you're pretty bad. <laughs> Snake bitten. And so am I. That's right. And then Jesus tells Dr. Nicodemus, 
the verse that we probably all have heard and most of us have memorized, that God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only son, whoever believes in him. We're going to talk about this more next week. Will have, will not perish, but will have eternal life. Do you see the context of this verse now? Do you understand it deeper now? And this term, born again, means something. <laughs> what God does when we turn to him, you can't earn your way. You have to look for, to Christ and say, forgive me of my sins and make me new and give me the ability to follow after you. The miracle is that when you turn to him, he does exactly that. This is why the Apostle Peter, later on, we see this phrase, born again. This is why he says this in chapter 1, verse 3 of his letter to us. He says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy. He has caused us. He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, which is kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. To enter the kingdom of God, you must be born again by water and the Spirit through believing in Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. And so again, some of you are here and you said, man, I get that and thank you, Jesus, for telling me about this. And you've believed. I just want to take a couple minutes to ask you the question, when did you first believe, if you have believed? And I'm asking you to respond one by one if you want. Do it in a sentence. I first believed the knee of my mom when I was five years old. I first believed when I was 17. I first believed 1964, whatever it is. And you either say it loud or you say it in the microphone. I'm going to turn this on now. We're not squealing. Bless these guys. Stand up. When did you first believe? In 1994. Thank you. Who else? Go ahead. All right. Happy birthday. Yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna, I'll turn this on. And that's I amount became of born again September 7th, 1974. All right. Come on. Hey, who else? Right there. Come on. Hmm. All right. Good. Who else? Yep, right there. 1987? All right, good, great. Okay, who else? Yep, right back, straight in the back. Yep, Paula? Nice and loud, go ahead. I was saved in 1975 in the basement of my junior college dormitory. Okay, the moment you first believe. Who else? Right here. September 1996. September 1996. When did you first believe? Okay, we'll go here, and we'll go here, and we'll go here, and we'll go here. When I was 13 years old. 13 years old, and served the Lord her whole life. All <laughs> beginners, 1948. 1948. Yeah. Okay, yeah, go ahead, Peter. October 1965. 
You can go over here. <laughs> Give me a workout. Okay, Linda. I, I got sick in January of this year when I started coming here. January of this year. <laughs> and she's going to be baptized on Easter. She's one of the people that are going to be baptized. And, when, and you are too, and a number of you. Okay? You believe. You believe. You believe. You believe. There's stories all around this room. From little children learning from their parents to people learning when they're well along in years. Thank God for that day, that season, if you have it. And I'm going to pray for you. That you believe these things and be equipped to tell these things to people. Right? Take them to John chapter 3, right? Write notes. This is where this is. Ezekiel where this is numbers this is what this means right just be a witness to what god has done 1991 right just a witness explain this if you're here today you're like oh i finally get it well the holy spirit is blowing on you friend moves how it wants to move. Today's your day. And if you say, hey, today's my day. I need to be washed of the water by God. I need a new heart by His Spirit. I need to be healed from my snake-bitten sin. Look to Christ today. Today's your day. You will enter and see the kingdom of God. And if that is you, I'm going to pray for you. And I want to talk to you and give you next steps. We'll line you up on Easter Sunday for a baptism. Right? We're going to receive communion in just a second. I'm going to pray for us before we transition there. And if you say, I want today to be my day, and I'm going to do this like this. I'm going to, I'm going to pray for you, and then I want to talk to you afterwards. Right? Come see me. I'll be right somewhere here. <laughs> say, yeah, that's me. I want today to be my spiritual birthday. Right? If that's you, I just want to see your hand right now. Okay? Let me see that. Just ask him. Okay, we know it's got you. Okay, Riley. Okay, let's pray. And let's pray to God for his goodness and thank him. God, this is an incredible passage of scripture. Thank you. That this word has been spoken to us, God. Thank you that you provided a way for us to be made whole, to be born again. God, thank you that you wash us and make us clean and forgive us. God, thank you that you give us a new heart and a new mind to follow after you. We're grateful. That we can see and enter the kingdom of God through you, Christ, who is the door and the way and the truth and the life. God, will you help us to always remember what you've done? To give you glory, to follow you regardless of what you're saying of what you're asking God that we would say yeah I'll go to Kenya yeah I'll, I'll love my grouchy neighbor yeah God I'll choose to follow you over following my old nature and help us in this 
May the gospel be so precious to us. More precious than anything or anyone. That you, Jesus, would be who and what we treasure above all things. Do that, God, here. Keep that here. And God, in our mouths, will you help us to communicate these things and live these things well, God, and we need your help because we can't do it. But you can. Open doors, God, spirit, move. Spirit, move. In our hearts, in this place, in our families, in this community, in our world. Spirit, move, we ask. God, for those who say, I've decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. Bless them this day. We thank you that in you we have life in your name. We praise you and honor you. We renew our faith through communion. Amen.